Ladies and gentlemen, today, we delve into the life and legacy of a man whose presence on the screen defined an era. A man who was more than just a pretty face, he was a symbol of British cinema in its golden age, a man of depth, intelligence, and contradictions. This is the life and biography of Dirk Bogard, an actor, a writer, and a figure who left an indelible mark on both the film industry and the literary world, early life, a foundation in the arts. Dirk Bogard was born Derek Jules Gaspard Ulrich Niven van den Bogard on March 28, 1921, in West Hampstead, London. His father, Ulrich van den Bogard, was a Flemish-born art editor for The Times, and his mother, Margaret Niven, was a former actress. With such a background, it's no surprise that young Dirk was drawn to the arts from an early age. The blend of creativity from his mother and the intellectual environment fostered by his father set the stage for what would become a remarkable career in the arts. Growing up, Bogart attended Alan Glenn School in Glasgow before moving to the Chelsea School of Art, where he developed an interest in painting. However, it wasn't long before his love for the performing arts took precedence. He was particularly drawn to the theatre, and it was here that he began to hone his craft, studying the nuances of performance that would later make him a household name, World War II, a formative experience. World War II played a pivotal role in shaping Bogart's life. In 1939, at the age of 18, he enlisted in the British Army and served with distinction throughout the war. Bogart rose to the rank of captain in the Queen's Royal Regiment and was later transferred to the Intelligence Corps. He saw action in several key campaigns, including the D-Day landings and the liberation of the Bergen-Belsen concentration camp. The horrors of war left a profound impact on Bogart. He rarely spoke of his experiences, but those who knew him well often remarked on how the war changed him. It instilled in him a deep sense of melancholy and a heightened awareness of the fragility of life, elements that would later permeate his work as an actor and writer. This period of his life also gave him a unique perspective on human nature, one that would inform his performances and make them resonate with a depth rarely seen in cinema at the time, the rise to stardom from heartthrob to serious actor, after the war, Bogart returned to London, determined to pursue a career in acting. He began with small roles in theatre productions. But it wasn't long before his talent was recognised by the film industry. In 1947, he signed a contract with the Rank Organisation, a leading British film company. His breakthrough came in 1950 with the film The Blue Lamp, where he played a young criminal. The role was a success, and it quickly established him as a rising star in British cinema, however, it was his role as Dr. Simon Sparrow in Doctor in the House, 1954, that truly catapulted him to fame. The film was a massive success, and Bogart's portrayal of the charming yet bumbling young doctor made him a household name. He went on to reprise the role in several sequels, each one adding to his popularity, but Dirk Bogart was not content with being just a matinee idol. Despite the adoration of his fans, he yearned for more challenging roles, ones that would allow him to explore the complexities of human emotion. This desire led him to take on more serious and darker roles, a move that initially puzzled his fans but ultimately solidified his reputation as a versatile and daring actor. One of the most notable of these roles was in Victim, 1961, where he played a barrister who risks his career to help a young man caught in a blackmail scheme. The film was groundbreaking for its time, as it was one of the first to address the issue of homosexuality in a sympathetic light. Bogart's performance was hailed as courageous, and it marked a turning point in his career, signaling his transition from heartthrob to serious actor, the collaboration with Visconti, a European reinvention, in the 1960s, Dirk Bogart made a bold move that would redefine his career and establish him as an international star. He began collaborating with the Italian director Lucino Visconti, a partnership that would result in some of the most memorable films of his career, the first of these collaborations was The Damned, 1969, a film that explored the rise of Nazism through the lens of a corrupt and decaying German industrialist family. Bogart played the role of Frederick Brookman, a character who is both morally ambiguous and deeply tragic. The film was a critical success, and it showcased Bogart's ability to portray complex characters with nuance and depth, but it was their next collaboration, Death in Venice, 1971, that would cement Bogart's status as a serious actor of international repute. In the film, he played Gustav von Aschenbach, an aging composer who becomes infatuated with a young boy while on holiday in Venice. The role required Bogart to convey a range of emotions, desire, despair, and resignation, with minimal dialogue. His performance was haunting and has since been regarded as one of the finest of his career. 
Personal life, a man of many contradictions, while Dirk Bogard was a public figure, he was also a man who fiercely guarded his privacy. He never married, and his private life was the subject of much speculation, particularly regarding his sexuality. Bogard lived for many years with his manager and partner, Anthony Forwood, though he never publicly acknowledged their relationship as romantic. This discretion was partly due to the societal norms of the time, but it also reflected Bogart's desire to keep his personal and professional lives separate. Bogart's writings, particularly his autobiographies, provide some insight into his inner world. He was a man of deep intellect and sensitivity, with a keen understanding of the human condition. His experiences during the war, his observations of the world around him, and his reflections on his career all contributed to a rich inner life that he expressed through his acting and writing, however, his need for privacy also created a certain distance between him and his audience. While he was admired for his talent and charm, there was always an air of mystery about him. A sense that the real Dirk Bogard was someone few truly knew, the writer, a new chapter, in the 1970s, Dirk Bogart began to focus more on writing, a passion he had nurtured for many years. He published his first novel, A Postillion Struck by Lightning, in 1977, and it was met with critical acclaim. This was followed by several more novels, as well as autobiographical works that offered glimpses into his life and career, Bogart's writing was as eloquent and thoughtful as his acting. He had a gift for storytelling, and his books were praised for their wit, insight, and literary quality. His autobiographies, in particular, are considered some of the best written by an actor, providing a candid and reflective account of his life in the spotlight. Writing offered Bogart a new way to express himself, one that allowed him to explore themes and ideas that had long intrigued him. It also provided a form of solace in his later years, as he retreated from the public eye and focused on his creative pursuits. The final years, a legacy secured, Dirk Bogart's later years were marked by a gradual withdrawal from public life. He continued to write, but his appearances on screen became less frequent. His final film role was in Daddy Nostalgia, 1990, where he played an ailing father reconnecting with his daughter. The role was poignant, and it served as a fitting end to a remarkable career. In the years leading up to his death, Bogart suffered from ill health, including a series of strokes that left him partially paralyzed. Despite these challenges, he remained active in his writing and maintained a sharp intellect until the end. Dirk Bogard passed away on May 8, 1999, at the age of 78. His death marked the end of an era in British cinema, but his legacy has endured. He left behind a body of work that continues to be celebrated for its depth, complexity, and artistry, the weight of war, shaping a darker perspective, the impact of World War II on Dirk Bogard cannot be overstated. The experiences he endured during the war, especially his involvement in the liberation of the Bergen-Belsen concentration camp, left indelible scars on his psyche. These experiences contributed to the often somber and introspective characters he portrayed later in his career. The horrors he witnessed infused his work with a realism and depth that resonated deeply with audiences, for example. In the film The Servant, 1963, Bogart plays Barrett, a manipulative manservant who exerts psychological control over his employer. The role is chilling, with Bogart's performance underscored by an undercurrent of the darkness he encountered during the war. His portrayal of Barrett is not just that of a sinister servant, but of a man shaped by the moral ambiguities and brutal realities of his past, echoes of the complexities Bogart himself grappled with. The Cost of Fame, A Life of Isolation, while Dirk Bogart's fame brought him widespread recognition, it also imposed a profound sense of isolation. Bogard was a deeply private individual, and the constant scrutiny of his personal life took a toll on him. He never felt entirely comfortable in the public eye, often describing fame as a poison chalice, the pressure to maintain a public persona, particularly in the post-war period when his popularity soared, forced him into a life of contradiction. He was a beloved star adored by millions, yet he often felt alone and misunderstood. This paradoxical existence is perhaps best illustrated by his decision to retreat from Hollywood and focus on European cinema, where he found roles that allowed him to explore the darker, more complex aspects of the human condition, the struggle with identity, the enigma of Dirk Bogard, one of the most persistent mysteries surrounding Dirk Bogard was his personal life, particularly his sexuality. In an era when homosexuality was not just taboo but illegal in many parts of the world, Bogard was forced to navigate his personal relationships in secrecy. His long-term partnership with Anthony Forwood was never publicly acknowledged as romantic, 
a reflection of the societal pressures of the time, this need for discretion undoubtedly influenced Bogart's work, particularly his role in Victim. Playing a character who is blackmailed because of his sexuality. Bogart brought a level of authenticity to the role that suggested a deep personal connection to the material. The film was a courageous choice, not just for its subject matter but for what it represented in Bogart's own life, a defiant stand against the hypocrisy and oppression of the time, despite this, Bogart remained a private man, guarding his personal life fiercely. His reticence to discuss his sexuality openly has led to much speculation, but it also speaks to the pressures and prejudices he faced throughout his life. This struggle with identity, both public and private, added another layer of complexity to his persona, making him an enigmatic figure in the eyes of his fans and the media, literary pursuits, a new form of expression, as Bogart transitioned away from acting, he found a new form of expression in writing. His novels and autobiographies provided an outlet for the thoughts and emotions he could not always express through his film roles. In his writing, Bogart explored themes of memory, loss, and the passage of time, often reflecting on his own life experiences, his autobiographies, particularly a postillion struck by lightning in snakes and ladders, are candid, yet they maintain the air of mystery that surrounded him throughout his life. These works offer glimpses into his inner world, revealing a man who was deeply introspective, often haunted by the past and perpetually searching for meaning, writing also allowed Bogart to confront his own mortality. As he aged, he became increasingly reflective, often pondering the choices he had made and the life he had lived. This introspection is evident in his later works, which carry a tone of resignation and acceptance, a recognition that life is as much about loss as it is about achievement, the final curtain, legacy and remembrance. Dirk Bogart's death in 1999 marked the end of a remarkable life and career, but it also solidified his status as one of the most significant figures in British cinema. His contributions to film were not just in the roles he played, but in the way he pushed the boundaries of what cinema could explore. He was unafraid to tackle difficult subjects, and his performances often challenged audiences to confront uncomfortable truths about society and themselves. In the years since his passing, Bogard's work has continued to be celebrated, and his films remain a testament to his talent and versatility. He was a trailblazer, a man who refused to be pigeonholed, and his influence can be seen in the work of countless actors who followed in his footsteps, Reflection, the man behind the screen, in reflecting on Dirk Bogard's life, one cannot help but be struck by the dualities that defined him, a man who was both public and private, adored and isolated, celebrated and misunderstood. He was an actor who could convey the full range of human emotion with just a glance, and a writer who explored the depths of the human soul with eloquence and insight. Bogard's legacy is one of complexity and contradiction, much like the man himself. He was a figure who straddled the line between the glamorous and the gritty, bringing a unique blend of charm and gravitas to every role he played. His life was a testament to the power of art to reflect, challenge, and inspire, and his work remains a vital part of the cinematic and literary landscape, ladies and gentlemen, as we remember Dirk Bogard, let us honor not just the roles he played, but the man he was, a man of deep intellect, profound sensitivity, and an unwavering commitment to his craft. His legacy endures, not just in the films he left behind, but in the hearts and minds of those who continue to be moved by his work.